Now, Radio Inchcombe, it's time for my next guest on the Bad Girl special. And, I mean, she really was a bad girl, wasn't she? Snowball Mer- uh, Merriman. The, the things that she did on the show was just, uh, some were evil and some were just crazy. So ah. let's say hello to uh, Nicole Faraday. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for uh, coming on the show. So, first of all, when you joined uh, Bad Girls, it was well established. Yes. Um, it had been it on for, for a few series. And you came in straight away as, as a main character. Um, a yes, snowball. which was fantastic. So how did you how did you get the part? I guess you auditioned for it. Yes, I had um, God, I had five recalls. Recalls being um, auditioned. So and the first time I went in, actually, they'd originally decided that the character was going to be American. So I had to do a general American accent. So they were seeing actresses from all over the country that could do an American accent. And the second time they got me back in, they said they decided to make her from the deep south. I had to start with a southern accent. So, um, so we had to do that, hence why she had that, I don't know if you remember, in episode 14 of series um, four, she had that big sort of holy roller kind of religious speech where she yeah. got them all to light her lighters. Well, that worked really well with a southern accent. Um, but then the third time I went back in, they told me to wear less clothing <laughs> because she was obviously an ex-porn star. Every time I went in, they said, can you make your boobs push up more and wear, wear less clothing? We want her to be really OTT kind of glam ex-porn star type. So every time I went in, I had to wear less clothing and change my accent because she was general American, then Southern American. Then the third time I went in, they said, actually, we've decided she's pretending to be American, but she's really from Bolton. Um, and I'm from Dorset. So I, I'm lucky that I'm good at accents. And my best friend is actually from up north. So um, so I was like, right, OK, quick. Um, kind of how do you how do you pronounce this word, this word, this word? And then when I actually got the job, the final audition, I was wearing such a short skirt and such a little amount of clothing, I had to get a taxi there and back because I couldn't possibly use public transport. <laughs> I went all out for the part. And um, and then on my first day of filming, they said, we've had too many characters from Bolton, so you're actually from Wigan. Okay. So I was like, ah, okay then. So literally, um, yeah, it was funny. She went through different stages, different phases of enjoying the audition process, but it was my big break. It was my first big telly job. I'd done the odd... The odd small role on different things before playing sort of girlfriend of or wife of. And so it was the first time that I'd been um, a main protagonist in a series. And I just think Bad Girls was fantastic for that. It was probably the first mainstream television program whereby all the lead characters were female. So it was a really juicy, juicy role to get, get and a really amazing show to be a part of. And of course, when you, um, when you walked onto the wing... Uh, you could see Jim Fenner's eyes light up. He had this actress walking in, um, and of course he went straight to the sow and he was trying to get you on side. Um, yes, yeah, sucker. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's fair to say that Snowball, um, she had, she could deceive everyone. I mean, she would, she would get them to be on side with her, but no one realised this cunning plan that that she had, which actually led to one of the biggest stories in the show's history. Of course, that's the explosion uh, in the yes, prison. I- so when- I always say to people, I played Snowball Mary on, on Bad Girls. Um, she was a um, drug smuggling, murdering ex porn star from Wigan that blew the prison up. That's my <laughs> that's like my tagline. It's like I kill people, I killed loads of people. I escaped prison four times. I I blew the prison up and I hung myself. So you couldn't really ask for more dramatic <laughs> storylines than that. <laughs> Did you ever find it pressurising though? I mean, to come on a well-established show and be told, right, you're going to be a main character for this series. You're going to be involved in one of the biggest storylines. So that's quite a lot of pressure uh, to have on yes. your shoulders. It was so nerve-wracking. My first day of filming, because I, you know, probably the listeners realise you don't necessarily film in order of what you see on the television program. They normally filmed it in two episode blocks, so you would they would film two episodes over, I think two or three weeks. Um, but they would, you know, move the order of, of the scenes around depending on, the, you know, daylight, depending on how, how how convenient it was to film which bit when in which part of the prison. And so actually, my first scene was the um, was the big speech where I'm I'm getting them all to light their lighters in 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 the prison chapel. So you can imagine. It had all the main characters in it, Yvonne Atkins, you know, um, all, all, all of them. Um, and that was the first time I got to meet any of them, standing in front of them giving a religious speech. And I was so nervous. It was like being a new girl at school. Um, but everyone was really lovely. And once I got that out of the way, I thought, if I can do that, I can do anything. Because it was very daunting to have such a big scene to start with. And I mean, when the the show had aired um, and you would walk out in public, did you ever get the public kind of approach you and just give you verbal abuse or anything? Because Snowball was such a, a hated uh, character. She was evil. She uh, was. Um, she was, but no, actually, I was quite lucky. I didn't, um, 
I saw a few, there were a few fan fic sites and, and you know, like fan sites online where people yeah. go, oh, I hate Snowball. And at first I took it a bit to heart, but I had to keep remembering it's the character, it's not me. Because that's the thing, because it was my first big television program. Um, it, it was like disassociating yourself and thinking if someone doesn't like the character, it doesn't mean that they're having a go at you personally. Um, but actually in public, actually more more people than not, they kind of follow you for ages. And then, and then they eventually pluck up the courage to go, excuse me, are you snowball off bad girls? And you go, yeah. And they go, thanks, and then leave. It's so funny. It's like all they wanted to do was know if it was you or not. And you get lots of people taking pictures with you and sending them into Now magazine or whatever to get their 50 quid of spotted, you know, thing. <laughs> so it was actually really nice because I thought, oh, good. You know, I didn't get any... Everyone just said that they loved the show, to be honest. I mean, it was such a popular show. I think at one point it had sort of 11 million viewers a week. And, and it, I think it was like the most successful primetime television drama at the time. And we won all sorts of awards. And yeah, so by and large, and I got such lovely fan mail as well. And, and I did lots of personal appearances at different things and charity stuff. And, and everyone was always really positive. And I mean, not only did you uh, come in the show and was one of the main characters involved in such a big storyline, but you actually had some of the best feuds as well with the biggest characters. Of course, we just said about Jim Fenner, but Yvonne Atkins as well. Um, I know. She, she's... Well, yes, because I was obviously dating her, which she didn't know. Richie. It was all a big setup. That's the thing. She, her character, which, which I really enjoyed, I, I enjoyed the, um, turning everything on its head, because obviously her character unmasked me at the end of my first episode of Being American that really I'm just a porn star from Wigan. And I had that big speech about, okay, you know, yes, that, this is me, you're, you're right. And so people kind of obviously were lulled into a false sense of security thinking she's just this, you know, poor girl from up north that's yeah. kind of not done very well in life. But actually she was a brilliant actress. And so that was the thing. It was like everyone kind of, no one suspected that she was as clever or as good an actress as she was. As you said, she was able to manipulate everyone. And obviously it was all a big setup from the beginning because Richie, Yvonne's son, who was my boyfriend and true love, kind of, it was probably Bonnie Clyde, Bonnie and Clyde kind of complex thing. Um, it was, he, he was desperate to get revenge on his mother. So, um, so yeah, it was all set up from the beginning. I went out of my way to befriend her and then, um, and then set her up for the bomb scare. And I mean, that was a love story as well between R Richie and Snowball. And I mean, you actually ended up shooting him uh, accidentally uh, on the show. And then obviously he died in the scene um, after in the explosion. In front of me. And then, yeah, and then um, that was a, a failed attempt on Snowball's behalf. But with, with Yvonne, I mean, she really, really hated Snowball. But you could see that she knew how much Richie loved her. So although she wanted to just kind of do everything she could to, to hurt um, Snowball, she did kind of help you out by giving you yeah. the odd letter from him and stuff so it, she did put her she song did. first and actually it's ironic really because obviously by the end snowball it was a love story because she was so in love with him that once he died she said she didn't mean to shoot him obviously um but then once that happened it meant that he felt he had no no will to live for and he wasn't able to help her physically anymore with her her attempts at escape and I think they just kind of thought, God, right, let's, you know, like star-crossed lovers like Romeo and Juliet, let's, um, let's, um, let's kill ourselves and be together in heaven. And then obviously that, his suicide attempt went wrong because he, he died in front of me and they made me cough up my pills. God, it's all so depressing, isn't it, when you think back now? Um, but then obviously, because of, Yvonne hated me, blaming me for the fact that her son had died, but at the same time, she knew that I wanted to die to be with Richie, so she ended up distracting the prison guard, um, Colin Hedges, so that my character could then go and hang herself at the end. So it's partly because she wanted me dead, but also partly because she knew I just wanted to be dead to be with Richie. It's a really, it's very complex when you think yeah. about it. In fact, she hated me, but she also helped me. Weird. Now, with the character Snowball, uh, I mean, I, I think, and I know a lot of the, the fans think it, um, it's someone that I wish was in the show for longer and, and more series because I really think she. Well, so did I. So did I. It was my biggest ever telly job, and I was gutted when they told me I was hanging myself in episode ten. <laughs> 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 you can imagine. I was in a car park. I just finished doing the um. Actually, because they obviously they plan these things weeks in advance, and I signed up for the end of series four and the whole of series five, and obviously at any point they can reserve the right to you know get rid of you. Yeah. Um, and uh, they, yeah, I think we just finished filming the the car chase when, when I escaped, I don't know which time, like the second time maybe, when I took Karen Betts hostage and we had stunt doubles and big action scenes and everything. It was great fun um, out on location with me and Richie in the car and, and Karen Betts in the boot. Um, and we just finished a really tough day, like a sort of 12, 
40 now a day out, out, outside. It was freezing cold. And I was in the car park. I was on my way home, and the producer kind of went, Nikki, can I have a word? Um, just to let you know, um, before the scripts come out, you hang yourself in episode 10. But because so many bad things had happened to Snowball, having come in as this really glamorous character, and then suddenly she was like, you know, had her scar across one eye. You know, everyone hated her. People were trying to kill her. She'd slit her wrist. She had food, gave herself deliberate food poisoning, tried to poison herself. Because so many awful things happened to her. People were always joking, like, what's going to happen next? Her leg's going to drop off, or, you know. <laughs> and so at first I thought he was joking. So I was absolutely gutted when I found out I was, I was being killed off because I loved playing her and I would have loved her to have, I would have loved to explore more once yeah. she got through all the depression and once she got through all the, um, all the other characters hating her. It would have been nice to see her rise like a phoenix, you know, to kind of, you know, take control again because I think she was very clever and she, um, she did definitely have the possibility to do more. However, I just have to say as a caveat, I'm pleased because obviously every actor, when you get told that you're being killed off in a series, you start panicking and thinking that the writers don't like you or that the producers have had enough of you. But within a month of me um, being killed off in Bad Girls, the same writers and producers got me in to do the first ever workshop of Bad Girls the Musical, which I then ended up doing for years and years and years and won an award and, and played Shell Doctor in the West End. So, so I was able to play Carry On with ba the Bad Girls family, even though Snowball had died. <clears throat> I definitely think she uh, she could have gone on for more. But do you still keep in touch with any of the cast members uh, from the show? Any 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 friends that you made uh, during your time there? Yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a lovely family feeling. I have to say. In fact, I, remind, it remind, I was at all girls' school, and it was a bit like that. Like obviously, sometimes you all fall out. It's a very it's weird because obviously it's a set, but it was the largest freestanding fixed set in Europe. Little fact for you there, fact fans, which means it was. Um, kind of felt like going into a prison in a way it was a very oppressive atmosphere you felt very com compacted because you spend nearly all and apart from when i escaped obviously <laughs> or courtroom scenes and you spend all day every day not seeing any daylight and with the same group of women and inevitably you get a bit of cabin fever and sometimes you know people would get a bit fed up with each other but overall i would say there was just a really lovely feeling i made friends that i'm still friends with now i'm still friends with alicia i'm still friends with kim who played buki still friends with uh, pauline um she's up in scotland now so if i ever do edinburgh festival and i catch up with her vicky bush i'm still friends with yeah and terry norton has said she lives over in france and she said if i'm ever in france to go and visit so there's definitely we, we mostly keep in touch through social media i'd say and i've seen linda a few times over the years because i've sang at the albert hall for leukemia research and she's She's been there as a guest, and also, and she was in, as has her role in EastEnders. She went on and sang "Last Christmas" by um, Wham, with the woman that played Heather, you know, in EastEnders. Yeah. So there was one year a Christmas uh, carol concert at the Albert Hall that she was singing and I was singing. So it was nice to catch up with her then. And I know we we just spoke on uh, off air uh, before the interview, but I know you've got some exciting uh, upcoming projects as well that you're working on. Yes, well, last weekend was amazing, I just have to say. I was um, I was one of the headlining acts on the women's stage in Leicester Square um, at Gay Pride in London, which was a phenomenal, um, amazing atmosphere. I loved it. Um, not sure if any of your listeners went, but it was a great, great day. So now I've got that out of the way. My next thing is I start rehearsing soon for um, playing the Alison Steadman role in um, Abigail's Party, Beverly, the main role which I'm really looking forward to because it's such an iconic part. Um, I'm doing that down in Wimborne at the Tivoli Theatre um, in August. So that will be fantastic. Actually, Alison Steadman, who plays Beverly, um, in real life is married to the guy that played R. Chaplin in Bad Girls. No Reverend way. Hills. Yep. Uh, I, I, so I don't have to know a her quite well. She used to come, she used to, come to our um, cast parties and things, and she was always very lovely. Wow. Well, honestly, it's been amazing chatting to you. It's great to get you on the show, and it's nice to see how much love uh, there is for Snowball. I mean, you probably get it all the time uh, on Twitter, but she was a great character. She was in it for such a short time, but she made such an impact, and it made her one of the most legendary characters on the show just because of how many big things she was involved in. And it's nice to hear that you've got such fond memories of the show as well. Yeah, thanks very much. Actually, just thinking about it, I should also mention, obviously, my big rival in the TV series was Shell, because Snowball was brought in as the new chef. Snowball was mimicking Shell, and Shell was saying, like, oh, did she think she is nicking my look, which is how it's so funny that I ended up playing Shell in the musical. But anyway, but Deborah Stevenson is also absolutely lovely and has actually made her her home in real life down 
in Dorset, which is where I'm from. So I've m- bumped into her and had a coffee with her a couple of times too. So we, we all oh, kind of wow. keep in touch, which is really nice. She's she's uh, part of the special as well. She's going to be on uh, a little bit later on the show. Ah, oh, fab. So looking Excellent. forward to that. Give her my love. I will. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. No worries. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye.